today we'll talk about the full thickness swagger. I know it's public, uh, it can be seen by everyone, uh, it's a really helpful document for developers like us, but what if we don't want some methods to show up by some clients? It could be for security reasons or maybe the business decisions, but today we will talk about to hide some methods for specific users. Let's check it out. Thanks, my God, because Swagger has a class for filtering the methods. Its name is document filter. But firstly, we have to understand how Swagger recognizes the methods. Uh, I'm using .NET 6.0 for this application. Actually, I'm not creating a new project. I implemented the Swagger filter on existing project. These are my controllers. For example, this is get all users by table methods. This is my controller. Uh, I declare some custom routing on top of the methods. This is custom attribute, HTTP get. This is the keyword of the methods, get all users by table, and this is ta table name is parameter. So actually, uh, Swagger can recognize the methods by their paths. And before I say, I'm using Swagger document filter class. This is my customer Swagger filter class. It's inherited from the iDocument filter. It takes two parameters. I have to implement the apply method. Uh, I, it's one of them is open API document and the second is document filter context. Actually, I never use this context parameter, but I use Swagger document absolutely. How I can re remove these methods from the Swagger? It's easy. This is it. This is my Swagger document parameters, paths, all the methods paths in this list, and I can remove easily when I write the exactly paths of these methods. If I write this uh, paths on remove methods, uh, and if we call this methods in apply method, uh, we will not see this get all users by table uh, methods in my Swagger document. Actually, that's easy. Next goal is collect all methods paths. So I created a Swagger service table on DB. These are the properties of this table. ID is the primary key. Uh, service key is the most important property. Uh, we will save all methods paths on this column. Uh, this is created date and this is, is the latest column. Uh, that's easy. And firstly, I have to collect all methods paths from Swagger docs parameter paths and bulk insert to the DB. So I use the apply method for this and we will call this code block at once. I'm using uh, entity.net uh, 6.0. These are my entities and this is the Swagger service entity. First, I will connect to DB. I'm using MSSK server. Uh, I collect all the paths from Swagger. This is link query. And I will remove the API keyword. I think it's useless. And I will convert all the collectors to lower. Uh, my purpose is more readability. Uh, so I convert the paths like this and set all the methods paths to Swagger list. And after all, uh, I will call the add range uh, at the methods and uh, I will bulk insert all the paths to my uh, SQL Server DB. Uh, actually, that's easy. After inserting all the paths, uh, data looks like this. These are all my methods paths, and I collect all of them. Uh, as you see, there's no any path keyword, and all the characters is uh, lower case. So that's easy. Let's move on. Now it's time to create dummy data who can see some methods and who cannot. Actually, we will create some uh, user swagger permission table. I created user swagger table as you see. These are the properties of this table. ID is my primary key. URL ID is URL query parameter. 
I use this ID for uh, filtering the user. Uh, this table is related with Swagger service and DB user. Uh, so ID user and ID Swagger is my foreign case with these tables. And finally, create date and is deleted are my default properties of every table. Now it's time to insert dummies data for three user. Uh, these are my simple insert query. I created dummies data for three user. Uh, this is my simple query condition. It is easy to understand. Mod two for user ID one, mod three for user ID two, and mod ten is user is used for user ID three. I prefer URL ID against the ID user because of security reasons. ID is so short and it is easy to remember. So I prefer at least six digit number. You can use it eight or nine digit like this. Uh, why security is so important? Because I use this ID on URL for filtering user like this. So everyone can see this ID and I prefer longest number against the user ID. Let's check it out this dummies data after execute this inserted query. I will select from user swagger. These are the three users dummies data. If I use this ID as a URL parameter, I will get only four methods name. It means user ID three can only four methods on swagger document. Uh, before using Swagger document filter class, we have to make some configuration on startup.js on .NET. And these are my startup.js. We have to call this document filter methods for declare our customer Swagger filter class as a, a document filter. And one more thing, I have to reach HTTP context from anywhere in this application. So I use this HTTP context accessor method. Why I need to HTTP context? Because I couldn't find any parameter object in a document filter class. So I create my own solution. I get the uh, URL from HTTP context and parse it and get the ID from URL and I use it uh, for filtering the data. And after all, for security reason, I prefer to remove all metal schema at the bottom of the Swagger UI. So I call uh, this uh, default model X expand depth method with negative one parameters. All the metal schema uh, will remove at the end of the uh, Swagger UI page. So I call this method two. And I think that's all. Uh, we configure everything. Now let's filter all the data by using this URL. And finally, we will go to customer swagger filter class. First of all, we will get HTTP context from HTTP context accessor method. And the next, we will get current HTTP URL from HTTP context request headers. And next, we will parse this URL and get the ID by using parse query string extension. I highly recommend it to using this extension. It's really useful. If its ID is null, there is nothing to do. But if it's not null, before I said, uh, I'm using uh, entity 6.0 for this application. We will get DB context. And we will write our first select query uh, on Swagger, user Swagger table on MS SQL server. We will use this URL parameter for where condition. For extra caution, I remove the API keyword from service key and I convert all the characters to lowercase. I highly recommend to use as no tricking extension for uh, improving entity performance. If you don't uh, update or delete operations, there is no reason not to use as a no tricking. So I highly recommend to use this as no tricking extension. On select query, our next select query is on the Swagger dog pets. We will get all metal pets from on it, and we will use where condition uh, which metals are not contains in Swagger case. We get these excluded metals and remove the Swagger documents pets, 
And what is the result of this query? We exclude some methods which are not belongs to the specific user. And voila, finally, we succeed to filter some methods for specific users. Let's make a real demo. And before starting the demo, I would like to select one of the user for filtering. Uh, I prefer the user ID tree for filter. And so I will use this URL ID for URL parameter. When I start the application, first of all, all the methods come on Swagger document. So I didn't write any uh, extra condition at the beginning. Now we will change URL with this ID. And yes, now uh, for user ID, only four methods must come. See on the DB, only four methods uh, belongs to this user ID tree and, and push the enter and voila. Only four methods come for user ID tree and there is no any uh, schema at the top of the page. And so finally we succeeded. If we change user ID, user ID 2, we will use this URL ID, I think almost 2, 4, 6, eight, uh, almost totally 9 methods must come on Swagger. I change uh, ID by user ID 2 and you will see only 9 methods comes on Swagger document and we will succeed, we filter some methods on Swagger document by specific uh, ID. Uh, thank you for watching me and see you next video. Bye-bye.